Nitty Stew podcast. My name is Leanne. I am the Nitty Stew. Stew is short for stewardess. I am a Canadian flight attendant and also someone who happens to be very, shall we say, enthusiastic about knitting, uh, the knitting lifestyle. I just recorded about two minutes of this introduction and realized I wasn't actually recording. So here we are. <laughs> Let's just keep on rolling is what I say. Um, yeah, so welcome. I'm glad you're here on this channel. I share my knitting, what I'm working on, what's to come. And also I get to show glimpses of the beautiful Canadian cities. I have the privilege of overnighting in for work. Thank you very much for being here, everybody. Anyone new or returning viewers? I hope everyone is doing well. And uh, if anyone is struggling, I do hope the storm passes soon and that ease returns to your life soon. So I'm just having a little Bengal spice tea here as I come down off the high that I'm on right now from this wonderful, wonderful overnight I'm in today. It's golden hour here. And here is, you probably saw from the title of my podcast, I am in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. It is the unceded and traditional territory of the, pardon my pronunciation if this is wrong, Abiguit Mi'kmaq First Nation. And today has been unbelievable. I have a lot to share and I've uh, had a great suggestion from a viewer, subscriber, fiber friend, who said it would be very helpful, there's actually two people who suggested, if I put a map of where I've traveled. So I'm gonna put in here, I started in my base, which is Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I flew out last night, four hours and 25 minutes with a nice tailwind out here to Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Such a beautiful place. I had not been out here since 2018. I looked back in my Instagram feed actually to see and I'd really wanted to um, explore and this whole ability to get out and about today was a bit of a miraculous push around because at first my company that I work for sent out an email saying there were no hotel rooms available for us here in Charlottetown and I was super bummed about that because my overnight is 35 hours and then about a week before um, we got another email saying yes there were indeed rooms here in Charlottetown so I was very pumped about that and the next thing was okay while I'm here in Prince Edward Island how can I not go and visit the amazing Fleece and Harmony and Belfast Mini Mills. So I looked into renting a car and uh, it's peak season out here. So it's packed. I looked on rental cars, which were for even like three hours, $225. A taxi was starting at $67 one way, which would really cut into the fiber budget. And lo and behold, this amazing community pulled through and two incredible new friends. We've got uh, the amazing Tanya and Joanne, who <laughs> Tanya emailed me because I had put it out on to YouTube if anybody knew how I could get around. And she emailed and said, oh, I think your post that you put out on YouTube got taken down by YouTube. And I was like, actually, it was me. I was like, Leanne, I think you're being too much again. <laughs> <laughs> just tone it down if all you can do is wander around Charlottetown downtown it's still beautiful don't worry about it and Tanya was like no it's the island way I'm gonna help you out so she told me exactly what to do and I got to venture out today and I have footage of that so I can't wait to get jumped right in um, to the content also I am running on approximately uh, three hmm that's pushing it maybe three to four hours of sleep so be gentle with me if I have to edit the video to because things don't make sense um, there we go I have to edit but for today's episode I've lots to share it's been I think three weeks uh, since my last podcast it's been super busy it's been go 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 with flying and that's good the world is opening up people are traveling flights are full <sighs> So things are awesome. 
Um, I have been knitting. I have not been studying as much as I need to as I have annual flight attendant training. We do training on our emergency procedures and other things every single year. And <laughs> mine is coming up in September and I have a lot of e-learning left to do. Um, so I will be working on some very easy projects over the next little while. Um, today, I have three finished objects to share. I've got two whips and I have some imminent cast-ons and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, I have a crap ton of acquisitions. And I will explain myself, although I don't think I need to justify, this is my fiber community, so you get me, you get me. All right, my first uh, finished object, I was it was my emergency knit from the last podcast, Louis number two. I finished up his arms and legs and got to deliver my great nephew Ethan, his replacement, or let's just call it an addition to his first Louis the Lovebot Robot by Rebecca Danger. I was, as I drove out to deliver it to him the other day, I was like, I wonder if he's gonna actually like it because it won't smell like his original stuffy that he is inseparable from. from. And yeah, the second I got there, he asked if I would give it to him. It was in my purse and he grabbed it and started walking around with it and he was very excited about it. Lots of hugs. So Louis one and Louis two, although he calls him Dewey with a D, I hope will last him till he's done needing a stuffy. And yeah, not much more to say about that other than I took some major detailed notes um, because what if I had to make a Dewey number three? <laughs> I love Ravelry for that. It does keep me in check. So my major finished object, which I am super proud to say I completed, is the Karuna shawl. So here it is in all its green glory. Is this the right side? Yes, it is. All right, this is the Karuna by Rania Hakaleto. It was a knit along last year, hosted by Knit My Way Home podcast, Loretta and her many fiber friends. And I made it with Briggs and Little Sport, one ply in dark green. This ended up taking 2.6 skeins. It's a schlanket. It's the closest thing to a schlanket. It's got all garter stitch and increasing, and then it has two lace panels around the bottom. Pre-blocking, before I wet blocked it, it was 64 inches wingspan and 29 inches deep. And I let it soak in water, rang it out and hung it out on the line to dry. And it grew in the most glorious way. It grew to 94 inches of a wingspan. This is definitely a monster. But I'm very pleased with, and you'll see I actually did left and right increases. And I also did, um, oh no, that's that's a lie. The increases are all yarn overs, but I did do left and right decreases. This dark color, um, I like it in this light. It does actually show the texture quite a lot. But I am ready for some softer on the hands. This is toothy wool. And I learned a lot by making this I learned that it is time for metal needles, <laughs> wood needles and rustic wool. It's, it's a lot, it was a push, not gonna lie. As I was getting up to the last few bits of the chart, I was like, gotta get it done, gotta get it done. And yeah, I got it done. So I'm very pleased about that. The garter stitch, everything was fine and dandy. It's kind of like, the lessons of life, right? When things are going smoothly, easy peasy, garter stitch life. And then, okay, boom. Life is like, okay, time for lace panels. So you better concentrate, Leanne. And I I did. I was intimidated. As I was looking at the chart, it's a paid pattern, so I can't really show it here, but I have this thing that I always do and I separate each repeat of a pattern cables, color work, lace work, 
with stitch markers. They truly are the heroes of me accomplishing this. <laughs> just having to focus on a 20 stitch repeat. However, when I looked at, just before I got to the lace panel, I started to be like, you know, maybe I don't really need to do all of that lace. Because I thought it was going to increase within the stitch pattern, within the 20 stitches. And then I would have to move my, I couldn't rely on my, my stitch marker placement. And I just jumped in and did it. I was fearless. So uh, it kept me on track. And I'm really, really glad for that because uh, as the more tired I was getting, and at times I was like just really powering through, that's when I'm gonna make mistakes. So yeah, I think it turned out really well. And Karuna is actually an Arctic chicken-like bird. Super cute. It's got, this is where the lace motif comes in. It, it's got a similar feather pattern. So that is my second finished off. My third finished off is based on my dive into unspun yarn world. I'm really trying to practice as I've joined the um, Honer Ock Air New Tiden Patreon, Patreon. And so I wanted to practice with some unspun yarn and I had some from 2015. It's from Custom Woolen Mills and it's six strand prairie bulky from um, custom woolen mills which is a mill just north of sorry my phone there just north of calgary and a place i think it's just called crossfield or near crossfield and so i use the dark black uh oh hold on it's getting stuck and the natural so the colors are light gray, two, and the dark one is five, black prairie wool. And this is my own design. This is the North Wind Cowl, which uh, in 2019, 2018, 2019, I actually went to our Maker Life conference, which held, was held in Calgary, and I met the lovely folks from Lion Brand. And so I made kits, uh, f like, well, I didn't make the kits, but I, I submitted the pattern and they were able to make kits for linebrand.com for a bulky weight um, color work cowl. I had a three color version and then this uh, two color version. It's super fast. After, after Karuna, I needed some instant gratification. So I, I jumped with these. This is made on a US 15 needle. I'll link everything I'm talking about will be in the, in the description notes below my video. And I'll put timestamps too if you're not if you're not digging what I'm working on today, you can just skip to something maybe that is. What I ended up doing, so this isn't six strands actually. I split the six strands four and two. So it was super easy to do with the dark black, but the the more natural color was actually hmm, harder to find the plies. But I soaked it overnight and I did a steam block with wet towel and an iron, which is how I also, I have uh, a description and photos in my, in the pattern itself. And that's the, I'm showing you my floats. Is there anything more satisfying than bulky weight color work? I'm not really sure. Unspun and I are going to be friends and especially how light that is, but it's super warm because of course it's a double knit fabric with the, with the color work. So that was my third finished object. So that covers all my finished objects knit wise. I did do a little bit of hand dyeing in the last little week. The things I will do to avoid studying for my annual and doing e-learning. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but if you do, you will have seen these. I have an amazing friend, Leslie, who lives in Lethbridge, and she had her own hand dyeing business called YYC Knits when she lived in Calgary, but she's moved out of town and she's become an amazing respiratory therapist, unsung hero, roller skate aficionado. She's awesome. In January of this year, she started sending me little surprises in the mail and they were little 10 gram skeins, mini skeins of Swish Worsted by nitpicks and they kept arriving in the mail and 
uh, the inspiration hit. So I grabbed my dye pots. I have some Dharma dyes and I have some Jacquard dyes. And I came up with this little number here. Uh, this I've decided to call, my daughter actually came up with the name, Lemongrass. So it was, I started with golden ochre and did like a tonal. And I was like, yeah, that's okay. But green, always with the green. I used some Dharma dye, sage leaf, and it started picking up. That must have just been something in the dye pot. It's got a little bit of yellow, and well, a lot of yellow, some orange, green. Pretty happy with that. And then <laughs> espresso. So it's like a dark brown. I used navy, black, and brown, and ended up getting these little guys. So not sure, I mean, I don't think these need to go together. I mean, although they could, it's quite the contrast, hey? I don't have anything in, in mind for it. She also, as a finale to this beautiful male happiness that my friend Leslie sent me, she finished it off with two 100 gram skeins, which are still a natural. I didn't, I didn't dye them. So maybe I'll save that as a treat for once my annual training is done. So that was, it's been a while since I pulled out the old dye pots. Okay, um, without further ado, I would like to show some footage of this amazing city and my adventures in Charlottetown today. Tanya told me that the bus would arrive at 1145 and it would take me out to where she is, which was just outside of town, about a 30 minute bus ride. So I stopped to get a smoothie, but the smoothie also had coffee in it. So I felt like I had my bases covered. Jacques Cartier had this impression of Prince Edward Island when he first saw it in 1534. He described it as the fairest land that may possibly be seen. And the Mi'kmaq have their own version of Cartier's observation. If the creator made any place more beautiful than this, he surely kept it for himself. Just gorgeous. Uh, yeah, so Another thing which I found was really cute and endearing and just about the charming nature of Prince Edward Island was that the bus that was taking me out to this rural area, someone had called the bus, I don't know, the bus dispatch and said that they had missed their bus and our bus driver turned around and went and got them. <laughs> this one person, <laughs> I was like, that would never happen in Calgary. In fact, that would be a riot probably. And yeah, so we went back and got this girl who was, I guess, not standing in the bus shelter or had just missed the bus. Anyways, I met the lovely Tanya and we headed straight out to Police and Harmony, which um, Belfast is gorgeous. Yeah, the thing I noticed right off the bat was how quiet. <laughs> it's so quiet. And they were so welcoming, Ken and Kim. Kim was very busy. She was doing her newsletter and she's got a lot going on with the Fiber Festival, the Prince Edward Island Fiber Festival coming up. And also Arna and Carlos are showing up in November, like a lot on the go. She was writing her newsletter. So Ken gave this amazing tour of the mill and the process and how everything works. It was really, really interesting and I loved it. He's so kind. He also knits, which is really cool. I mean. I think the two of them are a major power couple. They have the most beautiful shop. I definitely got some acquisitions while I was there and I will show those later, but their Selkirk wool is just absolutely glorious. It's beautifully dyed and knowing that it comes right from the fleece all the way to the shelves is, I mean, that checks all the boxes. Yeah, that one right there is, <laughs> that is a gorgeous one. That's buttercups. It just happened to match my shirt. And oh my goodness, this incredible um, lace section here <laughs> called me. <laughs> uh, and you know what, Ken was encouraging me to, as were the lovely um, Tanya and Joanne, who everyone there knew each other by their first names. Like, what a beautiful place, wonderful community. Um, got the little tour of the property, got to meet 
uh, the sheep. Super neat. But that wasn't all. Uh, next up was the Belfast Mini Mills, just down the road. And they also knew Joanne and Tanya by first name. And oh my goodness, was there some glorious stuff in this shop too. It was a feast for the eyes. What really, really caught me was this table full of beautifully knit hats by Simone. And they use 75% Samoyed fur, 25% fine merino. This um, cream, the white color, just the halo on it is incredible and it's so soft, like, <laughs> it was great. Um, yeah, I'm going to be definitely watching their podcast. They have the Worsted podcast, so Worst and then ED, pardon me, in brackets. Super nice people, Troy and Simone. Mm. And then the amazing uh, Joanne took me back to uh, back here to downtown Charlottetown where I wandered around a little bit more. Okay, my work's in progress. What I have on the needles is pure garter stitch. I am making what is actually called the leaf washcloth, but it's, it's a pattern that I've adapted to make gifts. Um, yeah, they are, it's a garter stitch. I'll put the pattern, of course, in the links below. And I've been using my scraps of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter to make these and these are these are I'm calling them coasters or mug rugs and I start to think about Christmas gifts at this time of year and what a nice gift it would be to get somebody like a hand um, pottery mug for the tea lover or the coffee drinker in your life and then and then a couple of these leaves to put on their coffee table and I have quite a few little scraps of the Brooklyn Tweed Shelter because of all of the on the sea train hats that I made. They had some leftovers. So on my needles, my current whip is, there we go, I'm just doing the bottom half. Now, if you've made this pattern before, um, the first time I made it, I was like, mm, I don't know, it goes concave as you knit it because you're doing a little shaping. But with the shelter, and I've only made them in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, to be honest, I give them a little bit of a, a wet block and then I steam them with an iron and a wet towel and they lay flat, pretty much. There's also a stock and net version in the pattern. I've only ever made the, the garter stitch one, but I can easily enough whip one of these out. Uh, they don't take a lot of yardage. I'll put the details uh, in my in my Ravelry page. I'm pretty sure I've got how many grams it takes, but that's more than enough to make probably even two out of that. And then I have a little bit of this color, which I I made my sister some of these for, I don't know, I think it might've been her birthday in February, my sister Wendy. So that's my current super easy work in progress. I can, watch all the podcasts and there are so many good podcasts it's like a whole new hobby i see new ones come out and i'm like oh my gosh i need six hours to catch up and watch everybody's inspiration i'm going to put a bunch of links below to the ones that i've been watching the the ones that have been giving me so much joy lately and thank you to any uh, podcasters who've been mentioning me on their channel i really love how this community just we lift one another up and it's a great joy to be a part of that. So I'd also like to do the same. Uh, in my description notes, I'm gonna put the ones that I've been binging and that I just find are delicious. There's too many to actually just mention right now. I'll have to put them underneath. Sorry about the crinkling hair, but I do need to, I wondered if I was gonna show this or not. Oh, my work in progress. So you'll recall that I had done a yarn therapy purchase to, create 
self-patterning Pac-Man yarn made by uh, yarn artistic yarns by Abby and I ordered a skein to make some fingerless mitts Ta -da. well let's just say not everything works out in rainbows and butterflies in life now does it I had a, a heck of a time lining up these dang Pac-Man so this was me using the uh, recommended needle size in the pattern trying to follow the instructions there actually isn't a video I emailed her to get to see if she maybe had one but uh, she didn't get back to me so I was like okay well how about I try a needle size up <laughs> and did that and I was like mm. that's me having a tantrum the actual thing that worked was let me get this right US one and a half 2.5 mm double pointed needles wha-bam we've got pac-man ghost here okay now you'll notice this is not a fingerless glove <laughs> I I realized that the number of stitches that you cast on was a little bit too it's gonna be too big for my hands so I thought oh I'll make a water bottle cozy because on board we all have our two liter water bottle. We, we drink as crew to stay hydrated and I'm on our overnights. But then when I put it on, it stretched them way out of shape and they looked not so good. So it is a work in progress, but it's in a timeout right now because I feel like I want to maybe make fingerless gloves. I should have maybe, like my husband suggested, got this in the sock quantity, because how cool is that? To do color work like this would require some major intarsia. So you'd have to have like separate balls of the colors to go around. But like, I mean, check it out. Because of the way she dyes this, this is the inside out. Ooh, that's kind of, okay. So I found that the key to it was sort of following it like a chart. It does show square by square that you should have, for example, two black squares and then one red, two black, one red. So it's almost like doing feral intarsia. Not sure if that computes unless you're actually doing it. So this was supposed to be a bottle cozy. It actually does fit nine inch circumference bottles, but I don't have that on board. And yeah, and I think maybe what I'll do is when, I, when it's not in a timeout anymore, I will rip it out and make some real quick wristers or fingerless gloves because they are fun. I've got enough. It is clearly marked and now that I understand how it works and I got the right gauge, which in the things she says it doesn't matter, but yes, it definitely does. And for me, I was not getting the US2 gauge correctly and just got the blobs. So that's it for my works in progress. Uh, real quick, wanted to talk about um, my queue. Uh, it's, my queue is basically based right now on two knit alongs that are coming up. The first is the Hohi Locatelli knit along for fall. It goes from September 1st all the way to November 30th. I'll put the little photo um, from the Ravelry group up here next to me. And I've decided I need to make the pure joy shawl and nothing gives me more pure joy than matching up a contrasting yarn that will have like flecks of color in it. So what I thought I was like, oh, I have leftover uh, windswept fibers in Foggy City and then I'll, I'll see if the lovely Pam at windswept, windswept fibers would send me a skein of dark so it looks I really like the color of the one yoga uh, Locatelli has <laughs> Locatelli I'm calling her by her last name ho he has in her pattern picture and it arrived and the contrast with the windswept fibers wasn't quite what I was looking for so with her blessing I asked Pam if I could dye over the color which she had called storm coming and while I was busy dyeing up these little babies, 
I pulled out black espresso bean and navy and my color is starting to change here but it's a deep navy blue black which looks a little bit purple in this light but anyways that's what I chose and instead of foggy city which is lovely and would look really cool I actually pulled out my Olan sock light in veil and that is going to be my pure joy shawl for the Hohi Locatelli fall cow. So I am looking forward to casting on for that. I am obsessed with Olan sock. Uh, I made a pair of gloves for my mother-in-law, a toy, a baby hat, and there was still, like it was, I called it my skein of fish and loaves. Like, you know, the parable of the fishes and the loaves, like it just kept going. And I was like, wow, this will never run out. But I mean, there is, this is 80% uh, superwash merino, 20% nylon, and the yardage, 425 meters. So if I'm not mistaken, that's about 475 yards, maybe, maybe bigger. And here's the thing. With the kindness that I was shown by the amazing Tanya and jo Joanna and the inspiration and the joy that this channel is giving me, uh, I want to give something back. And I was thinking, what better giveaway than Windswept Fiber Foggy City? Who would like to make something with this? Uh, this is 109 grams. It's actually generous. It's not 100, it's 109. So you could definitely get a one skein shawl out of this. And I think we're getting close to the 5,000 subscribers. Not that the number matters, honestly, but why not celebrate just giving things away? So if you would like to win the skein of Windswept Fibers, please leave me a comment. And in the comment, if you would, I mean, it will be a random chosen one, but um, I would be interested in hearing which does what you would use this for. Like, what would this one skein wonder turn into for you? And if you could leave that in the comment below, and then a few weeks when I do episode 10, I will pull a winner and I will send this off to one of my amazing fiber friends on here. So, surprise giveaway. <laughs> I love I love it. I love paying it forward. And that's what Joanne said. They would not take money for gas. Uh, and Tanya or Joanne. So Joanne's like, pay it forward. And I'm going to pay that forward. Thank you for being part of this channel. Uh, the other cast on and part of my queue is the Inspired by Ellen Knit Along, which is hosted by Knit My Way Home podcast, Loretta, and then Jackie and Carmen of Knitting a Good Yarn podcast. They are hosting an amazing um, bunch of like, there'll be a cast on party, there's going to be knit nights through the making app. And what it is, is this free um, free pattern by Ficolana. And you can use it in any way, shape or form. So you could make the actual sweater or for me, I'll probably make an accessory or two incorporating this beautiful 12 stitch repeat pattern and joining in for the community fun really is what it is. There's a group on Ravelry and also on the making app, which I've downloaded. And I think that's going to be super fun and it'll be, a, you don't have to use unspun yarn. I don't think that's part of it, but um, I'm going to because I'm all about this unspun yarn action. Uh, that leads very uh, comfortably into my acquisitions. So if you're going to scoot off now, uh, thank you for joining me. And if you're going to stick around to see my acquisitions, thank you for hanging out. Um, I hope you understand how grateful I am to have the ability to purchase these things and feed my fiber hunger, <laughs> my need. My acquisitions are a little heavy, but let me just say that if you've been watching my channel for a little bit, my belly button birthday is in May and I have two birthdays. 
My other birthday is my sobriety birthday. And this weekend marks 10 years alcohol free for me. And I uh, can always justify a purchase of some beautiful fiber because of the cost of alcohol, uh, not just monetary, but spiritually in my family and uh, basically holding me back in life is priceless. So I treated myself to some stuff and I'm very, very grateful and very open about this uh, journey that I'm on for a lot of people. Um, a glass of wine here and there, you know, mimosas, a beer, something on the patio is all fine and dandy. But for me personally, I have a very unhealthy, very toxic relationship with alcohol. And in my family, there's a not so good history of what it does to our minds and bodies and spirits. And I have found freedom and I'm so blown away by it. I was actually thinking about it the other day, just going, I can't believe my life today. Like. I had to give up one thing to have everything. So, okay, very grateful. With that all said, uh, if you have any questions about that or if you happen to be struggling in any way that like that, please reach out to me with my email here and I'll put that in the video. I'm more than happy to. There's many pathways. There's all types of ways to be free of addiction. Um, I'm not sure how to get off the yarn addiction, so don't ask me for help in that regard. But yeah, if you're struggling with alcohol in any way, um, I'm here to help and here to serve. And yeah, if that's a thing, statistically, 10% of the population. So that's a lot of us. Uh, so what I did treat myself with, and this was a little bit back, uh, Wool and Twine Yule. Uh, from the fiber wool and twine fiber studio had a pre summer She was closing her shop for a bit to take a bit of a break the hard worker that she is and I got in on her shop update and I got two of these beautiful fingering weight skeins of BFL Masham or BFL and Masham This colorway these are all naturally dyed by the way. This is walnut. Oh, it looks very light as the sun goes down in golden hour here in PEI and super outside my normal palette, but this is periwinkle. How pretty are these natural dyes? This is definitely more of a, a darker brown than the camera is showing, but I'm thinking again of becoming a sock knitter. It's possible. I could happen to be. So those are two. And I'm sure she'll be back from holidays soon with another shop update. I hope so, because she makes incredibly beautiful yarn. And also, as I alluded to, I got in on the Honer Aker Newtiden update, and I'm gonna have to smell here. Oh, Lordy. Fogging up my glasses. This, I got 300 grams of Skrimsle. That's how you say it. It's like a heather gray. I'm thinking of making the Ozetta cardigan. Oh, the Ozetta cardigan. No, the Traveler's cardigan by Ozetta with the 300 and a little bit grams of this I have. Light as air. And then I got in on the regular shop update, which wasn't just for Patreon. And this is Menning. It is like a butterscotch brown. And this I was thinking about making the, um, hold on, what is it called? Fields of Gold. There it is. I wanna make the Fields of Gold sweater by Isabella. And yeah. Uh, the other thing which was an acquisition was a gift Again, why I want to give stuff away. This uh, beautiful skein of hand-dyed air and weight yarn is from Crux Fibers, hand-dyed by the amazing Brittany in the Yukon Territory. She's like, I got some extra. They sent me extra or something along those lines. So she sent that to me in the mail. Thank you so much, Brittany. It's gorgeous. Oh, can never get too much of this. It is 75% BFL, 25% Masham. I see a theme here. I love Blue Face Lester and Masham, which is awesome. Yep. So thanks to Brittany for that. 
Next, oh, it's getting pretty dark in here. Ooh. All right, I better be quicker. I wanna speed up. This was my big splurge. I finally went out and got myself the Chiagu complete set. Enough with the, they have served me well, but my Knitter's Pride wooden needles, uh, I need to let them go because I got these in time for the last five rows of my Karuna shawl and I was like, oh, the skies opened up. Beautiful. So, I mean, I don't really need to, I don't think these need any introduction. Although what I didn't know is that it wouldn't have, because I didn't read that, the cable length to do a shawl. I had to order the extra 50 inch cable and now I can make all the shawls. Yay. All right, so I will put a video of the things I got at Fleece and Harmony, and I'll just end the video with the video, the video, this episode with a video, and that you can see what I picked up from there today. Again, it was a beautiful day. Um, last but not least, I was given the opportunity by, um, her name is Zairi and May from The Knitting Room, in New York, I'll put a link there, to test drive their travel bags. Yeah, the Wyndham travel set. And I'm telling you, I have been able to carry up to five projects on the bag. So my honest review is I dig these. And I am a no knits, sorry about the scrunching around, but I, I love these. Um, these project bags, I have them in a variety of sizes by knownits.com. But for me to go outside the comfort zone and give these a shot, and what it is, there's this is large, and there's the medium. Uh, I had my Karuna shawl in this large one, fit it no problem, and then my little work in progress in, in uh, the small. I and I gotta be honest, I I saw, I saw the zippers and I was like, uh oh, because my yarn tends to get stuck in zippers if I have any handy, like if I use a, a notions bag or whatever. But no, there's something about how the quality of project that they've used to make these project bags. It's got this piping around the edges and the structure and the quality of them, it's, they're really good. I quite, quite enjoyed having these and my implements don't, um, fall out. They also have a handle and these Tetris in my suitcase. So I've had them for a few weeks, quite like them, would recommend, um, especially if you like to keep your projects separate and in your suitcase. I mean, you could just hold your yarn, like in here I've got my uh, three skeins of the sock yarn. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to test drive these and to keep these. Uh, Zyri has been kind enough to offer a discount if you are interested in getting some of these project bags. 15% off for uh, any Nitty Stew subscribers who put Nitty Stew 15 as a promo code on their website, which I will link below. All right, everyone. Well, I kept it under 50 minutes and it's getting darker as the sun's about to set here in beautiful Charlottetown. I hope everyone is doing well and that you uh, are finding joy in whatever you're creating, whether that's knitting or other crafts, dyeing, maybe spinning and embroidery or crochet, all the things, maybe even cooking or gardening, which is something that I haven't found um, any, I don't think I have a gift in that. My husband waters the plants, so. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna sign off and we'll probably be back in about three to four weeks with another episode of The Nitty Stew. Until then, thank you so much. Be well, kind to one another. Much love, bye.